What a story. Portugal through to the quarterfinals. Gonzalo Ramos onto the uh, the top of the transfer target list for clubs all over Europe. The backstory here, of course, was that uh, Cristiano Ronaldo had been benched and 21-year-old Ramos, with only his fourth international cap ever, took his place, heading up Portugal as they, uh, in, as they face Switzerland in this crucial game. And boy, did Ramos seize his opportunity. Daniel, tell us about what it was like. It was it was absolutely bizarre from from the moment when I was travelling to the game and reports were coming through on Portuguese media that Ronaldo was going to be dropped. I think we we possibly expected Santos to take the captain's armband off him, but maybe not to drop him. Uh, and then this kind of tidal wave of on the metro here, there are a lot of Qatari and uh, Arabic fans going to games, particularly the knockout stages now, as as fans of other teams go home and everyone had Ronaldo shirts on and chanted Ronaldo chants on the Metro and chanted it all the way to the stadium and then obviously got to the stadium and found out that he wasn't starting uh, and then that was odd enough and then for Gonzalo Ramos to at the end of tonight in 73 minutes has now scored three more World Cup knockout goals than Cristiano Ronaldo is this kind of bizarre these sort of redemption arcs are meant to take place over like two years not 75 minutes and then there was still this like weird testimonial frenzy vibe when the crowd were chanting Ronaldo's name for about 15 minutes before he came on and like ooing every time he got the ball. And it kind of felt like it was pretty bleak for Ronaldo, I think, uh, having watched that. And he played the part well. He went and celebrated, but it felt really bleak towards the end. Mm. This coming across against the backdrop of his reported decision to join a club in Saudi Arabia, Al Nasser, which in many ways suggests that he himself feels he doesn't necessarily deserve a place at the very uh, top of uh, the, the, the footballing pyramid anymore. Gonzalo Ramos' goals, I mean, the first one caught, I think, the entire world by surprise. I know what you hit past summer, as Duncan Alexander here tweeted. Duncan. Yeah, I mean, it was one of those one of those narrative goals where I'm sure Ronaldo was sat on the bench going, well, I'm, I'll get on at some point, let's hope. Let's hope he doesn't do too well in this game. Um, and lo and behold, he hits one of the best shots uh, I think we've seen at the World Cup. I mean, there's basically a space about a football size that he could have got that past summer. Um, and he did it. And it was, yeah, tremendous. Incredible. Tim, do you have any sympathy for people who went along to a Portugal match to see Cristiano Ronaldo and he wasn't playing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, a lot. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's a remarkable uh, story for Ramos to, to be the man. Um, somebody, James, somebody, and I'm not going to say who, uh, predicted on The Athletic two weeks ago that Ramos would be the breakthrough star of the tournament. Uh, I'm not sure who it was. Maybe maybe one of the listeners can find out. Um, but yeah, there's been a bit of a clamour for him back in Portugal. I mean, he, he just scores goals. He scored, he's the top scorer in, in Portugal this year. He scored 9 in 11. Uh, the under-21s for Portugal as well. He scored 14 in 18 over the past sort of couple of years. I think he was top scorer at the under-19 Euros as well. So he is he is a goal. I mean, he's a, he's a proper he's a proper goal scorer as well. Um, one of his former teammates, um, Carlos Vinicius, said, "With Ramos around, there are no loose balls in the box." And I think we kind of saw that with with, with at least a couple of his goals tonight. Um, so yeah, his, his movement, his instinct, and his and his finishes all all top class. Does this change how you feel about Portugal and their prospects in this tournament, Daniel? Yeah, massively. That's the most dominant performance I've seen in this tournament so far. Uh, Switzerland are, are pretty good and they made Fabian Scher and uh, Manuel Akanji and Granit Xhaka and Remo Freuler this kind of block that Switzerland have had, two centre-backs and two mid central midfielders, look completely ordinary um, and they scored different types of goals. You know, they scored from a set piece, they scored from passing moves. I thought the way Jao Felix, the, the space he got to drift in from the left and the same with Bernardo on the right and then Bruno who we know will enjoy being this kind of figurehead leader of an attack without Ronaldo there. It, it, it does seem to make a huge amount of sense, just as it seemed to make a huge amount of sense for Manchester United. And yeah, I, you know, I watched Brazil. I was at Brazil last night and they were really dominant. Uh, and now I've watched Portugal and I think they're really dominant. I've seen France a couple of times and the standard in this tournament, I think, is of the final four, six, seven, eight teams is going to be probably like nothing else I can remember in my lifetime. I think... Yeah, you're totally right in terms of the teams that are getting through. I think that the, the most impressive teams thus far have all had pretty fluid front fours and Portugal probably didn't until tonight when, as Tim was saying it, 
Ramos offered you know a whole new dimension of, of play really and I think that does put Portugal straight into that into that category of teams that can can go on and win it um I mean obviously they're they're up against Morocco next which will it's you know that attack versus arguably the best defense in the in the tournament but you'd fancy them on on tonight's form to uh to find a way you've got to say it's it's huge vindication for the manager Fernando Santos who's kind of seen as this you know dour stubborn sort of craggy old guy who was refusing to drop his favourites. I mean, a year ago they had Rui Patricio was in goal, they had Mitinho in midfield, uh, Ronaldo up front. And, you know, they're all the wrong side of 34, but done so much for this for this team over the years. And, and, and he has dropped all of them now. And he's the one he has kept is, is Pepe. Um, what is he, 38, 39? And obviously he plays well tonight and scores. So, you know, he has... He has whether it, he wouldn't have bowed to public pressure, but he has he has brought the next generation through, and I think I think we've really seen what Portugal can offer tonight. So fair play to him. The other thing I would say is you talk to a few Portuguese journalists before the game. Ronaldo back home, it was a popular decision to to leave him on the bench, partly because they think he can be a great super sub as well as just getting him out of the team. But doing that at the same time as dropping João Cancelo uh, and yeah. not playing Ruben Neves, that made it an even bigger call because Cancelo is seen in the Premier League as probably the most all round, you know, defensive midfielder, fullback we've got. So to do both of those things is huge because he's already lost fullbacks. He's lost uh, Mendes, he's lost Danilo Pereira to injury. So it wasn't just the Ronaldo call tonight. Ev- everything he touched kind of turned to goals because, you know, Rafa Guerrero plays and bombs on down the left in the second half. Everything worked. It wasn't just the Ronaldo move. There was a weird uh, kind of ley line vibe going on to another game in World Cup history, actually, because um, Pepe scored. He's the oldest player to score in a knockout game. Um, second oldest overall after Roger Miller scored against uh, Russia back in 1994. And Ramos ended the game with four goal involvements, three goals and an assist. And he's the first player to do that since Oleg Zelenko, who got five goals and an assist in that game. So, yeah, sometimes these, these matches kind of link up beyond the... Uh, beyond the comprehension of humanity. Hello there. If you've enjoyed this video, why not subscribe to this channel? And if you'd like more Totally Football Show content, then just search for us on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Not an Athletic subscriber yet? Then just head to theathletic.com totally to find out our latest entry offer.